me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Whoa, that's a little scary, isn't it? Hello, welcome everybody. I know. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. This is August uh, from Strange Films, your host here on Strange Films Live. And I have a very, very special guest tonight. It is Michael Mathis, that crazy lion you just saw on screen. What's up, Michael? Long time no see. Hey, dude. What's going on, man? Listen, I, I yes. just, that kind of got me fired up just watching that all <laughs> over again, man. I, I know, I've seen right? It a thousand times, but watching yeah. it over one, man, I appreciate you, man, <laughs> having me on here. Let's go. Dude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My dude, uh, man, oh, man I'll tell you, we're going to get in the lion's den here in just a little bit. But, dude, that yeah. movie means so much to me. Uh, working with you was such an awesome experience. And, I'm t- and like you said, I've seen that clip. God, hundreds and thousands of times, but dude, when I see that face staring at me, just oh, dude, I'm like, oh, like, what is going on here? <laughs> it's, crazy, it's insane man. how. Uh, and shout out Eric Jackson, man, for making you just the most ferocious, scary looking guy ever. Shout uh, that was you. awesome, shout out. awesome guys. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we've got some people uh, already popping in the chat, which of course is our good friends, uh, Simiscare Studios, David Brandon, and uh, he says he's watching. He says the beast unleashed and uh, Frank Aguilar is in the house too. All right. So he says, yo, all right. So we're on Facebook. We're on YouTube currently. Um, Michael Mathis, dude, you are the man. You are all over the place. Okay. We've got so much to talk about tonight, Uh, but let's see. Let's, let's start, man. We've got, you're an actor. You're like, you're a model. You do some brand ambassador kind of stuff. And you're like a world traveler. You're all over the place, man. Uh, and, and and you call that the Mike Mathis tour. Am I correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. Awesome. Hashtag uh, Mike Mathis tour. You can find everything on Mike Mathis tour. Yes. And we were just talking. You just landed uh, back in Nashville currently. So you're in Nashville right now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why don't you tell everyone where you were this morning, though? Uh, just this morning. Miami, uh, had there a little go. fun on a, on a boat. Uh, there I love to, uh, as we say, I love to travel. Mike Matthews, yeah. tour. uh, I'm everywhere. I don't even know where I'm going next. Who knows? You're right. Right. <laughs> well, again, we've got so much to talk about, um, especially the Mike Mathis tour here in just a little bit. Um, but let's start with, uh, your origin story, my friend. Let's, how did you get started in just like the idea of, I want to be an actor. I want to do these kinds of things. I want to get in entertainment or travel or whatever that is. Like how long have you been doing this for and kind of what got you into it? Yeah. So, uh, with acting and modeling, man, it was, uh, it was crazy and wild. Uh, I tell this story people to people all the time and they're like, there's no way. Uh, but I was working, I'll say your typical nine to five, but I was working, uh, you know, uh, basically a nine to five, um, delivering money. And um, with Wells Fargo. And I got a call and they were like, hey, <clears throat> would you like to be an actor? From Mr. Adam Stair. Um, shout out to Adam. I uh, appreciate him giving me all the opportunity. Um, he was like, hey, you ever thought about being an actor? And I was like, oh, I growing up, yeah, I've always wanted to be on TV. You know, who doesn't want to be on TV? Um, and I was like, sure, let's give it a try. So literally quit my nine to five as scary as that might be for some people to give acting and modeling a shot 100 percent. so i went with it and it really turned out to be one of the best things i've ever done in my life thus far uh because i can't believe like i really did it and i'm really making a path for it um and i want to show people that hey you can really do it you just got to take that jump, that leap, uh, because it is scary. I mean, you know, you got something that is concrete there every day. You know, it's secured or as they say, job security. Um, and then you jump into a whole nother field uh, that I didn't know much about, but willing to learn, uh, taking information like a sponge and turn it into the best thing possible, man. 
Yeah, I mean, dude, that's so true. Uh, there's, you know, you hear that kind of success story with somebody, you know, who just is like, you know, I had this dream. I just decided to say, screw it and go do it. Right. And yeah. I had something very similar in my experience starting strange films. I was working, uh, you know, I was working in the news at the time, but at, yeah. at the time it was a very much like a nine to five, but mine was like three yep. in the morning to 11 in the morning. Uh, but anyways, Ooh. you know, you had no time to like, really do anything you know yeah. and, and and whatnot and and you're so con caught up in this like idea where it's like i gotta you know i've got my insurance i've got my benefits i've got my steady mm -hmm. paycheck uh you know <laughs> i can do stuff you know it's guaranteed right and it's and guaranteed. you're like it's, it's, you're scared to kind of branch out but then like there was that yeah. moment where it was like i just knew i couldn't do it anymore i had to like I had to do something for myself and, and, and bet on myself. And, you know, it was the best decision I've ever made because now strange that films is, is what it is, you know, without, without making that decision. Now, granted, I'm still, I'm, I'm in a nine to five now, but it's uh you know, I, I, I have a more of a balance now than I ever did. You know, yeah. back, before getting started, you're kind of like, you know, what do you do? How do right. I do it? It seems I for you, it. you just naturally picked it up and you're, you're still, uh, riding high on it. So what was one of the first big things that you um, kind of broke into? I mean, infamously, you, you're pretty well known uh, it, or people who follow you is that you worked on Jumanji 2, right? Was it the second one? Uh, or well, was yeah, it was the second one with The Rock and Kevin Hart. So technically, if you followed the Jumanji series, it would be the third one. Or, yes, uh, yes. The last one. Uh, but technically, it would be the second one with The Rock and Kevin Hart and mm -hmm. Jack Black. That, believe it or not, believe it or not, this is always a shocker and mind blower for people. That was my second gig ever. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome, it was, um, yeah, 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 man. It was nothing but a blessing, um, but it was a, a eye opener too. I mean, it was like, what? What is this? It's a whole different world. Uh, you know, I'm getting paid to do this. I'm getting yeah. paid to learn. Um, but I will always, and I always will, this will stick with me, to be on set with The Rock and Kevin Hart, Jack Black, some of the world-known actors. Uh, I think Rock in 2021 or 2020, he was the highest gross actor in the world. And we know uh -huh. Kevin Hart, uh, he, you know, his comedy tour and everything like that. Just to be able to talk and sit along with them to see that they have a conversation like me and you to show that how humble they are. It really, it really grounded me right there. It doesn't matter how much money you make, what movie you're in, what you do or where you go, remain humble and just be open to talk to people, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it, it's crazy. I can only imagine, first of all, what you were feeling for that being like your second gig. Right. And then you're like, what is this really happening right now? Like, like what? <laughs> But to sit with the likes of The Rock and, and Kevin Hart and having those kind of conversations, like you said, be humble about it. And I think most people like you can kind of tell with guys like that. They're they're pretty humble about what they do, their their success and everything. But at the end of the day, a lot. I mean, most celebrities, I mean, well, I'm all celebrities, but most people are humble. But like all celebrities are, are human beings, too, like us, you know, like, we're, you know, we're yeah. we're all just humans. do, And, and, and we all go our own journeys and stuff like that but those guys you know they had their past and they took them to where they are and and you happen to be involved in that in a capacity and that's super super cool dude uh yeah. so that's uh yeah i mean everyone who's a fan of you uh especially me is so proud of just to see the journey that you're continuing on but just even getting started from i mean like it's like a rocket ship dude just like going up and, right. and and just going about for it dude that's so cool uh, let's say hi to some people in the uh, the comments here. We've got uh, of course Simiscar is in uh, here. He said, "Make it or break it, man." That's basically it, dude. Like that's what you took the shot, and, it. and it happens. That's yeah. it. Uh, Bing Fu is in the house, my friend. Bing, Bing. what's up? Says, what's up, homies? Uh, Bing was a part of the Lions Den, my dude, yes, and uh, we we're very very happy to work with you. Hope we can work again together. We know we always want to love you, man. Uh, let's see. Simiscar said he loved that movie as far as Jumanji goes. Uh, and and that you are inspiring. So keep that in mind, my friend. Appreciate um, that. Appreciate and then that. Frank says, "Hear that, Paul Magilton, be humble." If you don't know Paul, he's our uh, our Butch uh, mascot, <laughs> Butch character in Center City. Actually, shout out Paul. I was gonna do this for the shout out, but I got you right here, dude, on the new shirt. Yeah, man. Let's I, go. Yeah, I know. Let's go. I we have a whole new. Oh, yeah, 
<laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out Paul Bajilton there. Yeah, we have a whole new uh, Butch collection T-shirts, and uh, there's three of them. And I this is my second one I finally got for myself, so I got to get the third one now. But yeah, they're cool, man. I like these shirts. Yeah, I got to get one <laughs> myself. Right. I got to get one myself. Yeah, man, I'll get you one. I'll get you one. All right, dude. So uh, before we dive into um, the Lions Den, because I want to talk a little bit about your experience working with us and and just kind of getting made up as a lion and all that stuff. Uh, briefly yeah. talk a little bit about you know so you're a mixed bag right you do all these things you act a lot um and you and you do more than just like the background extras like you've been like in uh like those re like the reenactment detective shows and all kinds yeah. of stuff like in, in indie films and stuff like that too so you're all over the place uh but like the modeling and like brand ambassador stuff like how do you get linked mm -hmm. up with that just people reach out to you do you reach out to others like how, how does all that work so a lot of my brand ambassador and uh ambassading and whatnot has really been me um, sitting down when I first started out. Hey, sitting down, I'm I'm DMing everybody. I'm sending out emails to everybody. I'm hungry, I'm trying to get my there name out there. Yeah. Um, you know, I use it like I was working a nine to five, and still to this day, I'm still <clears throat> reaching out. I'm hungry. You know, there's so many outlets. You never know who you're reaching out to, who you who could connect you with this, who could connect you with that. Um, so me just being able to stay hungry and be hungry um as cliche as cliche as that sounds um it really helped me because it brought and opened up doors that i you know didn't ever think uh like being an ambassador for a watch company like what yeah. i would have never thought of that um you know working with different people uh people contacting me hey i've seen you do this would you like to collab with this uh so it's 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 really mind opening and mind boggling at the same time to see that what doors can really be open as long as you're open yourself. Yeah. And let those no, doors sure. open up. Yeah. Absolutely. I, you know, Instagram, Instagram is a huge, powerful tool, dude. Like, I mean, like yeah. if you hate social media, like I totally get it. But like, and part of me does hate social media, but like you got to use it if you're a creator, man. Like you got to like use yeah. that, those resources, because like you said, there's so many people who are doing so many different things. And like, you know, there's people who are doing what we're doing, you know, even on the smaller level or much higher level, who can just provide something new for you that it creates a new opportunity and just gets you to new audiences and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. for a minute there, I was doing the same thing where I was just DMing everybody and be with strange films mm -hmm. and being like, Hey, I like this. Do you want to do this? Or, you know, can yep. I send you a shirt? You take a photo, stuff like that, you know? And that really does like, if you kind of do that like a nine to five, like it does yeah. kind of come back to you, you know? Um, so yeah. that's super cool. One thing I'm always curious about like brand ambassador, uh, ambassador stuff is like, because I was, I kind of, I'm trying to finally get to a point, um, you know, with this show or with strange films in yeah. general, like get sponsored by like yeah. a product or a brand or something like that. But like, is it yeah. something, is it kind of a more of a deal where it's like, they just kind of like give you some free stuff and you show it off or do you still get like paid off doing that? Like, um, you know, basically modeling for them or sh or reviewing whatever you're doing with the with the product mm -hmm. itself. Is it just kind of like a trade off like that, or or? Mm -hmm. So it's really contingent on what y'all talk about. That's really what what it boils down to. Because some are like, okay, you get a free this or that. Um, you know, as a trade off, you do a couple shots. I give you a free T shirt or a free watch right. or whatever. Others are every time that you post. I'm going to give you a percentage off of what is sold or okay. it could be, uh, you know, you sit down and sign a contract. Okay. Well, Hey, you get profits off of if there's this many items sold within this much time. Uh, so it's, you know, it, they break it down basically as a business format. Um, yeah. you know, the more you promote, the more you get, the more clicks, the more likes, the more buys, however you want to take that, uh, what have you discussed? That's really how it works. So it's it really is all together um, a collaboration, but it's really what are you trying to get out of it and what they're trying to get out of it. Right, yeah. Um, and whatever deal you, know, you guys work out in between, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Especially, and, it, you know, it all differs. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's cool, man. And uh, that's just another really, really neat thing that you do, man. So, all right. Before we get into some of the, the fun stuff here, uh, not that this isn't fun, but the take it or leave it stuff. But let's talk about the lion's den, man. Like me and you work together. Oh, uh, God, it's it's already been two years, dude, since we made that crazy. thing. Yeah, I know. Crazy. It's insane. Uh, and for people who don't know, 
uh, we made the Lions Den. What was it like three months in the lockdown, dude? Like super, like heavy, heavy pandemic, and it was like heavy, heavy. heavy. Like heavy, heavy. And what was it was one of those things too where it was like everyone, the news, everything was saying like you can't have more than ten people around and all this stuff yeah. and, and everything. So I literally made this film. I wrote this film in mind for ten people, and that includes all the cast, me as the director, and the rest of the crew, which was like what that leaves three, four people, right? Three, so it's four like people. Yeah. So, so there's 10 people literally involved. And the cool thing is what we got to film outside. So it wasn't so like, you know, everyone was inside breathing the same air and all that stuff. Anyway, so we had 10 people work on this film and we only wanted to do it in one day because we didn't do, we didn't want to keep making the risk of exposing everybody. So we just did it in one day and we made the lion's den. And the whole idea of the lion's den came from uh, shout out Eric Jackson once again, because he was the one who uh, came to me and he was like, Hey, I, uh, you know, I've worked with Eric on um, uh, the pass, the passenger film and subject film. Mm-hmm. And he's just yep. a phenomenal makeup artist. And uh, he was like, I have this idea where I want to make a lion. What can you do? I said, let me write a movie. <laughs> and then and that's, <laughs> I came up with lions, Dan, dude, like two days later. And, uh, you know, and then when I was looking, when I was looking for actors, dude, I like at that time, I remember seeing you like just floating around everywhere on social media and i just was like who is this guy i was like this guy is like <laughs> everywhere he's doing really cool things and he seems really nice and talented and everything so i reached out to you right and then and you were just like oh no. you were like let's go and, <laughs> let's and go. Uh, yeah we, we just made it happen like right away dude it was awesome yeah but tell me your perspective man tell me how it worked out i mean like you the from filming putting the makeup on uh everything else yeah. after because i think i haven't looked at the exact number yet but we're almost eight hundred thousand views now with the lion's dead oh, crazy isn't crazy, that insane crazy. it's, it's insane. crazy insane and so let tell me your experience, saying, man. <clears throat> man the experience was absolutely crazy because i remember you you contact me and i was just Anytime anybody, you know, contacts me, I'm just more appreciative that you took the time out to reach out to me. So I can't thank you enough, August, for taking the time reaching out to me, giving me the opportunity, man. I can't thank you enough. I know I say it too much. Always, man. To you, oh, you're good. But I love it, dude. I appreciate thank you. it so much, man. Uh, thank you. You reached out to me, and I was like, a lion? And I was like, what are you talking about, a lion? Like, you you got a lion, a pet lion or something? Like, I, I was crazy. I about that. That's like, crazy. <laughs> So, but I was like, no, you were like, no, let's get you dressed up as a lion. I'm like, okay. Like, and you were like, no, I was like, I'm like, what's going on here? So I remember I was very like, I was very audited out at first. I was like, all right, where is he going with this? But I was like, I trust him. He hit me up. I was like, let's do it. And I remember you showed me like a preface of what was going to kind of be what it was going to be like. You kind of telling me what it would be like, and I was like, yeah. "What? No way! This sounds creepy. Uh, all types of odd and all in one." And uh-huh. uh, I remember my first when we got there. When we first got there, you were like, "Man, we got it." I was like, "What, dude? You're really about to bring this to life?" So meeting everybody, getting everything, I was like, "Oh, this is legit." So I was like, "August, he got it. He, he has his stuff together." Because you know when you go <laughs> on some sets, you know things are chaotic or whatnot. So, yeah, yeah. August, you got your stuff together. Appreciate that, man. I, but I appreciate man, that. It means a lot. Down, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Sitting down. Uh and that man, he got me, he was like, Are you ready? And I'm like, eh, you know, you're not gonna just put something over my face. He's like, <laughs> oh no, 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 no. I, you have to sit down in this chair for about a good yeah. two hour hour. Yeah. I was like, Oh, I ain't never done this for you. You know, I've done some, you know, some uh powder or whatnot. And then you flow, you know, you go on set. But he was like, no, you have to sit here and get your makeup. I was like, mm-hmm. okay. So that was, you know, that was a different aspect in it in its own because I'm having to sit there, you know, it's kind of cool on my face, uh, you know, but that was awesome because that, that was kind of getting me geared into, okay, this is real. I got to get into character. Let that well, I remember, going. yeah, I remember like, it was like you were almost done and you like got out of the chair and you got to see yourself and you were like, Dude, like you were like you like I saw the genuine surprise, and not only like you know, obviously I was like, dude, like this is amazing, but you were like, what is going? Like, who am I? Like, you know, last time I seen myself was like this. Yeah, you were unrecognizable. I I was like, what? 
So shout out to him. I mean, he did amazing, yeah. did amazing, absolutely. Uh, absolutely amazing. So to see myself go from that to, you know, from this to that, I mean, it was like, what? And I think I actually had that video because I walked into the bathroom and yeah. uh, I see my, if I, if I find that, I'm going I'm to I'm go look for it. I'm going to send sure, that to yeah. you. I'm going to have to post for that. Sure. I'm going to have to post Do that. It. Uh, but yeah, I have a, so I have a comparison. Yeah. Where it's like, it was, we took a photo of you right before and then the photo of you right after. And it's just, it's just, I show that to people every once in a while, you know, I'm talking about the movie and they're like, Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Eric That's knows awesome. his stuff, man. He knows his stuff, hey, dude. Like when I worked Eric. with the first time I worked with him, uh, was, uh, 2000, like 17 with passenger. It's yeah. that poster right there the monster flick yeah. and my brother my brother was the guy who was in the makeup chair same thing dude he was like yeah what's gonna happen but dude, this is like two or three hours later he's just like looks like this completely like monster like from the Bob 80s or something you're just like holy <laughs> shit this is insane but yeah, yeah, dude. So, uh, so yeah, man. We so we filmed that day. Um, was it was yeah. it uncomfortable, kind of wearing it after like six hours or seven hours? You know, we were going. Listen, believe it or not, believe it or not, I wanted to take it home with me. I'm crazy. Uh, yeah. It's as crazy <laughs> as you want to say. The only thing that uh, only thing that got uncomfortable were actually the teeth. The teeth were kind of uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, but other than that. I wanted to take it home. I wanted to wear it just around town, see what people's yeah, right. react. Just start getting people's reaction. Put a camera on my face or something, and see people's I reactions. I wish we could have like had like an all nighter, and me and you just like went out in the town with a camera and just like <laughs> put some pranks or you know, like I just made a YouTube video out of it. You know, getting reaction, go through a drive through. You know, like <laughs> going <laughs> going to a gas station, get some stuff. <laughs> Just casually, you know. Yeah, just like, hey, man, you know. <laughs> hey, we might have to bring that to life. We might, hey, yeah. uh, we might have to see what Eric doing. We yeah, might have to see what sure. you're doing, and uh, we sure. might have to bring that to life. I, I would feel like, uh, let me ask the people, anybody that's watching, how would y'all feel about doing that? Would y'all, would oh, y'all want to do that? Would y'all want to see that? Our Is that something y'all want to see? Me. I know our strange films family would love it. Yeah, let us know. Let us know in the comments, man. Like that, yeah. that'd be a lot of fun. If Eric ever wants to come out and uh, do some makeup for us, man, uh, yeah, I, I'm down, dude. We'll, we'll, me and you will get in the car together. We'll just start driving around for hours, just going to everywhere we can think of and see what happens. Go sit down at a restaurant and see, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> oh man yeah dude it was it was awesome it was a lot of fun man and i'm so grateful that i got to work with you uh every obviously everyone on the on the the crew and cast and everything i mean like bing he's watching right now bing was a lot of fun um man, we just we, it was a it was a really great it, it, you know it was chaotic as it was because like we we're like oh we got to get it done we got to get it done mm -hmm. we couldn't uh you know we didn't have time to waste um and i wish on my end that you know, I maybe I would have cut lunch a little early or something like that because there's obviously like a day and night transition that really happened really transition. fast. Uh, but right. other than that, dude, I mean, like I think it was, it's almost like we just kind of did it and we did did it so like effortlessly and it just worked out really really well. And now it's won awards. We just won best film at a uh, FrankenCon recently. It's over. It's almost two hundred thousand views, dude. It's been, We've gotten some good hype from it. And I'm really, really proud of that film. I'm really proud of everybody we worked with and stuff like that. Uh, Brianna Rice says, "Do it." Some someone will have a heart attack though. Yeah, we have to. We'll, we'll definitely scare some people. For I, sure. can, I can imagine that. Yeah, you can run around like that over here in Philly. I don't think that's a good idea though, to be honest. Ooh, <laughs> that might know, be a little like scary that. over. That's yeah. a concrete jungle up there. Oh man. Yeah. All right, Michael. Well, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm so glad that we worked together on that. Um, and I'm glad to hear that you had such a good and fun experience with that, because that's every right. time I work with anybody, especially new actors, I'm always hoping that they're going to have a good, fun experience and that, uh, you know, it's just laid back and we have a good time doing it because that's what it's all about, you know, and and making yeah. uh, making like good content, too. So uh, so glad it all worked out, man. We're going to link up again in the future. I yeah. know we are. So it's going to sure, be good. For sure. Now, listen, I always on my podcast is I absolutely love podcasts. And thank you again for bringing up. But I always oh, yeah. do this little switch up where I ask a question to you. Do so it, I'm gonna ask please. You a question. I'm going to ask you a question. So sure. on the Lions Den, how did you. You ran out of time. A lot of people don't know that. You ran out of daylight. You mm -hmm. ran out of time. How worried were you 
transition in that to making the final cut and the final scene? Were you worried about it at all? Were you frustrated as a director? How did you feel like, and, and the reason why I ask this for people that, you know, bring this, uh, you know, somebody that wants to be a director or just daily life, being under that pressure of I'm running out of time and then transitioning to, okay, you still got to get it done. What do you do to get that done? So right, kinda, yeah. I guess, uh, yeah, let me hear your point of view on that. And whatnot. Yeah, that's a good question, man. Seriously. Uh, and thanks for asking. Um, so just, just a little bit of thought before we start shooting that night, that, Kind of, it was it was supposed to be dusk right like that scene i wrote yeah, it right. as a dusk scene where like you kind of started seeing the sun go down in the background which yep. if you watch the film you can see that happening but my mm -hmm. problem was we were had we took our like our dinner break right before that and right before, uh, we were right. already shooting like four or five hours or something like we were having a long day and i think at that point we were all really comfortable with each other's we and we just yeah. kind of ended up like hanging out for a little bit longer than we should have just kind of like yeah. ah yeah we're all eating like food and just talking and, da, da, da. and right. i'm like this is doing really well like you know and, and then, <laughs> yeah. like, so you know if i cut that by just like 20 30 minutes i really would have mm -hmm. i think i would have been able to capture the rest of that dusk so anyways you get you know we start shooting that last scene it's it's dusk mm -hmm. and i'm like no we're good we're good um you know that we can see the light and everything but then dude like it yeah. was like right as we were getting that critical moment dude it just like shut down I mean, it's like dark i mean snap <laughs> i was like oh my god and i was not expecting it you know like it was just, it all. happened so fast so yeah there's a, like there's some frustration there because at this point we're going six you know almost seven hours people are tired mm -hmm. you know you're tired you know we got our crew tired everyone's ready to kind of start wrapping it up and we're like we've got like this last like page of the film like it's the critical moment and it's like and, and so you're like what do you do well you have to finish it right so you right. just do it gotcha. so we we set these lights up as best we can um mm -hmm. you know i use the best techniques i can possibly think of and we get it done real fast and and get it you know and we wrap up what really was the hard part was editing because it's kind of like when i'm editing it and i clearly see that there's like that transition from day to night real fast i'm like uh -huh. i'm like oh god y you know your first thought is it's ruined like you know yeah. like it it's just it's ruined you can't do anything about yeah. it and i'm really technical like i'm really really mm -hmm. um particular about what i edit and how i present things so right. in my mind i'm like man this this is, looks amateur this is going to be amateur this sucks like i can't believe i mm -hmm. i screwed up da, da, da. i'm really beating myself up so, you know, I was kind of I just have to come to a conclusion that you can't do anything about it. You have to figure out what works best for the audience to kind of mm -hmm. transition mm -hmm. that. And I learned that from my very first film. There's something down the road because, you know, long story short on that is I, I screwed up on my first film and forgot to shoot mm -hmm. like a scene, basically a transition okay. scene. And yeah. what I had to do was I had to do a flash forward scene. So it, it's not mm -hmm. pretty, but, you know, it worked. You know, it kind of brings the scene from here to there. So this right. one, I was really inspired by uh, Tales from the Crypt, like with the the colors, where it's like, you know, with like when, it, when the scare happens at the end of the episode or when like the, mm -hmm. the monster's coming out, like they bring out a bunch of like purple and red lights and stuff like that. So yeah. what I did with you was like you can in that last shot, your back is facing the camera it is still dusk, but like yep. I built that scene with like red and purple glow around you. Glow and then right, like, yep. and yep. then like it's kind of like as soon as you turn, it, it's dark, but it's a purple and red glow throughout glow. the whole or throughout the whole frame. So it kind of looks like it's like stylistic maybe, but you know, that's yep. my, that was my best excuse I could do. You know, I just wanted to make it yep. look like where I could uh, transition it in a way where it wasn't just like, day night like i transitioned right. it through color essentially and then color. like uh and then and, and then once it kind of uh it happened and and then you, you could clearly mm -hmm. tell it was just like night from there you know it is what it is but yeah you just right. can't give up on it man you got to figure out creatively how you can move forward with it because you did all the work you did all the, the you know you, you put so much time and effort into it and so effort. many people are excited for it you, <laughs> you just can't abandon it right so right. um yeah, you just got to creatively, I think, get yourself out of the uh, the hole. Um, and sometimes it's not the prettiest, but it still works. Right. And I mean, we can tell people people still like it. So, you know, we can't so I can't complain. Like so <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. Hey, uh, congrats, man. And you did great. I appreciate that. And Bing says the darkness was the one little bit that gave out on us. But we had like a two hour rain delay that set us back. And that is true. We were supposed that to is. shoot 
like oh, real yeah. early in the afternoon, but it rained like That's two right. hours. When we all and, and it was heavy rain. Were, I forgot it about was. That. Yeah, it yeah, was I forgot about rain. that too. Uh, yeah, while you were getting made up, we were supposed to be shooting all these like extra scenes, so we would have had two hours ahead of uh, ahead of time. But it rained, so me and Bing and and everyone, we were just like hanging out for basically like two hours in the barn until right, until it just happened. So so yeah, that's a good point, Bing. I forgot about that. Uh, great makeup artist, awesome actor Michael Mathis uh, is awesome. The costume would make an excellent Halloween costume. People want to be the Lion Man. That would, that would be cool. August is great improvising. I thought it may have been a glitch in the Matrix. Oh, thanks, Paul. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Well, thanks for asking me. Ask me that though, man. That's a good question, yeah. and I don't get to talk about that very often, so that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Appreciate your answer, man, for sure. All right, dude. So we're uh, let's get into uh, this icebreaker game that I like to play with everyone, and it's called Take It or Leave It, my friend. Uh, essentially, right. the game is I ask you ten questions. Uh, five of them are going to be related to kind of what you do, and then the other five are going to yeah. be just completely random. And all you got to okay. do is tell me if you take it or leave it why we can talk about it it gets a it gives uh, the audience a really great perspective on getting to know you and then the audience obviously if you're watching let me know if you take it or leave it all right michael are you ready let's go <laughs> i love it i love it all right shout out our strange films family everyone's watching and everything uh and uh shout don't out. forget michael math is here uh we're on set and i'm uh, super excited to have him all right number one take it or leave it I know you like hotels and nice uh, nice places to stay, but what about Airbnb? Take it or leave it. I'm gonna take. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Okay. Yeah, Airbnbs. Oh, uh, yeah. I've, I've used Airbnbs. That's a good question, man. Uh, <laughs> man, I, I, I like that. That's a good. Thanks, open. man. Uh, yeah, Airbnbs. Um, you know, using the. I mean, somebody. So I'm very. Let me say, I'm very picky when I do my Airbnbs. Usually, yes. it's uh, the whole house space but actually i will say my first airbnb um i can't remember the young lady's name but it was in dc many years ago uh probably like first when airbnb came out so it was a couple years ago um and i did a shared airbnb i was scared i was that was the first oh, okay. time i was really kind of starting traveling and it was um you know she, i we how did she set it she set it up where I, it was a shared um common spaces and whatnot bathroom because it's like a one bedroom apartment oh, okay. and she had her bedroom and i just i slept on the couch um she had like a pull out couch and i was like man i'm crazy I, I, i'm winging it i'm trying it that was like my first airbnb man and that uh -huh. really after that i mean it really just uh i, I went crazy on you know traveling and everything like that uh -huh. but uh Y'all gonna have to take it, man. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I, I don't do Airbnbs a whole, whole lot. Um, but yeah, yeah, I definitely take Airbnbs for sure. For sure, yeah. I agree. You know, I take it too, man. I, I think kind of what you say, you got I'm a little picky with it. You know, you got to like. Oh, yeah, I'm very picky. picky. I'm like, very picky. Nice. Yeah. You got to make sure it's like not a dump or something. Or I'd rather have it to exactly. myself. You know, like, you know, like uh, I feel like it's kind of like a Craigslist kind of thing where it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> making sure it's not just some random dude who's like he's like hey you can, you can uh stay in my back bedroom over here you know <laughs> like, well oh i'm God, laying here yeah. in the in the living room <laughs> i don't want that you know uh yeah, but, but, yeah. No, i take it man but yeah I, I you know i noticed you stay in some really nice places so i figured i'd ask about the yeah. airbnb and your experience oh yeah with man that. That, that's a good stuff man yeah yeah man definitely yeah. for sure that's a yeah, great right. question right there and the uh, Simon Scare says, as long as you have a safe place to stay, that's all that matters. Take it. Absolutely. That's that's hey, that's, that's key. It. Be safe. Key. All right. <clears throat> Number two, take it or leave it. Oysters. Oysters? Oysters. Like raw or fried, or I don't know how you cook oysters. Or, or I mean, I know how you cook oysters. I've worked in a seafood restaurant, but leave it. <laughs> leave it. Now listen, I love seafood. Seafood. Yeah, I do too. Uh, man, anything sea, ah, I see that I can't say anything seafood, so okay. like, you know, your, your, your shrimp, I like most of everything, but when you get, I guess, to the deep, deep, like oysters and clams and like yeah. raw, like, r like some raw seafood stuff like that. Hey, yeah. Hey, you want to know I, what it is with me? You want to know what it is with the oyster? Yeah. Slimy, slimy. Yeah, dude. I worked at Red Lobster for like six years, and uh, really, and yeah, and oysters were the the you know it's one of those things that people just 
as an appetizer would get all the time and they're just so slimy and gross dude like i couldn't i just now i i can't do them but i would try like a fried oyster because you know it's fried but like i don't know right now in this stage of my life i say leave it but i am a big seafood eater i love like shrimp okay. and scallops and crab legs lobster like just about yeah. any seafood i love sushi you know like i'll take it but yeah. uh oysters i just can't get there yet man i don't know if i can yeah i'm just so. not there yet yeah, I'm just not there yet, especially the slimy uh, texture, like you said. Uh, we've got live streamed on. I'm not sure who you are, but appreciate you stopping by here. We says uh, They say take it all day. So they like take oysters. I, okay, I know a lot of people do like oysters. I'll have to just man up one day, I guess, and just take hey. it. <laughs> take it. Paul, Paul, what's the cost difference between Airbnb and hotels, Michael? Um, I mean, I'd say there's probably a significant cost sometimes. I mean, you can find usually cheap Airbnbs, but it just depends on the... I feel yeah. like it depends on location and like the size and how nice the Airbnb is, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, really, August, you're really right on it. I mean, it really just depends on that, where you're going. Are you going to a major city? Right. Or are you going... Because uh, I think my second Airbnb, Airbnb was outside of Pigeon Forge, but it was I forgot what town it was. Small town, but it was it didn't cost that much. It was a little small Airbnb. Uh, but you know, if you go to a major city, you know, it costs more mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, just depending, because I like to uh, everybody. I like to tell everybody, I'm a little extra when I do things. Uh, uh -huh. So I'll get a, I'll get a a huge house for just me to stay in. Yeah. Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> hey people you know you got you like nice things man there's nothing wrong with that i like nice things too all right man simus gear says you take oysters all day raw that's interesting uh, oh. Jor uh jordan fraley is live streamed over here and we appreciate you stopping by jordan thanks very much uh we appreciate, appreciate you we're, appreciate we're in discussions right now actually through email uh paul magilton says all day all right so <clears throat> let's get to number three well, we are, 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 are you know, only a number three here. Take it or leave it, Michael. Vlogging. So, like, not blogging, but vlogging. Oh! Oh! We gotta take it, baby! <laughs> yes! Oh, I love your energy so yes. much. <laughs> listen, and listen, and that's one thing, like, that's why I feel like blog, like, not blogging and blogging, either or, yeah, is... Yep my energy just to get my energy i mean I, i'm yeah. literally like just a ball of energy so just mm -hmm. to get that and i need to do more of it because i haven't mm -hmm. really been doing it a lot i've been traveling everywhere but i've not been recording it i'm not you know i'll take pictures and videos here and post it on the story but that's it but not actually like documentation you know like all yeah, that dude. um and just to get my energy out there to show people there's more to where you're at where more than just your hometown or oh you go to uh you know you go to this same beach every year there's more than that michael dude you're so. in the perfect position to be like a youtube star with vlogging like you know you're traveling every day or every week you know you're going to cities dude like you either need to do it yourself or have a hype man next to you and just film you all day if you need me to come visit you or hang out with you for three weeks dude i'll do it man okay i, I well <laughs> where's my camera man yeah man like you're seriously in a position like you need to vlog more dude like and 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 record all your travels make some cool videos get you some merch and talk about it on you know just all that stuff dude and i know you do like that stuff but like on a yeah. consistent basis and feed the beast with yeah. youtube for me dude see, this like is what i need to hear this is what i yeah, need dude, to hear I Dude, I'm your guy, man. I, I'd love, I'd love to help you out with any way, anything I can, and also I'll mm -hmm. always support you with everything you do. Uh, but uh, vlogging, dude, like for me, I need to do it more too. And I like, I'm the mm -hmm. same way. I kind of have like this big ball of energy where it's like, I need to release it, and you, you'll, you see that with me on set, and you see on that set, with me yeah. at events. Uh, when I, when yep. I'm behind the camera, I'm, I'm that way all the time. Uh, this show gives me that kind of opportunity to do that as well, which I love, but I, I, I need to practice doing it like just, you know, on my weekly day to day, you know, whatever it is, yeah. like when I'm doing the behind the scenes, working on the films and doing the events mm -hmm. and, and the shoots and stuff like that. But I think also, I just don't like holding the camera myself. I'd rather have someone stand next to me and just film me do it because I'm rather yeah. focused on what's going on right in front of me, you know? So, and see, that's where uh, I'm at. Yeah. I like that, you know, yeah. focus. Yeah. Yeah, you Pretty need sure. to get a guy that just follows you everywhere and just films you, dude. I'm telling you, you you make some money on YouTube just uh, doing that every day, you know, every just week. Yeah, right there. 
All right, man. Uh, let's see. Livestream says he uh, did daily vlogging for 10 years and he loves it. Uh, so that's pretty cool, man. Uh, awesome. I love vlogging, awesome. but I never did. I really enjoy watching other people do it on YouTube, especially Michael Green Kid behind the camera from the Angry Grandpa show. Yeah, I mean, vlogging vloggers are cool, man. I've actually started getting into watching more vlogging videos. I just think they're, they're I don't know, they, another person's slice of life or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, man. So we got number four here. Take it or leave it. Comic conventions. So like Comic Con oh, and that? stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll definitely take it. Oh, we got it. Yeah, we got it. Right on, man. You like comic books? You big like Marvel, DC fan, or just like in pop culture? I mean, I know pop culture in general, but like, uh, like if it was like a more comic con convention, you like you like all that stuff? Uh, All that stuff, man. So it's ironic that you say that because I have a background in security, and I used to make sure that I was any convention center that came to Knoxville, Comic Con, all those. I signed up. Because I wanted to be, oh, yeah. you know, if I wasn't able, I was working and I was there getting paid for it and escorting, nice. you know, the, the stars and, and, and uh, you know, everything, helping behind the scenes. So, oh, yeah, we definitely taking that, man. And I think right it's just a world that a lot of people haven't tapped in or even oh, know about. No. Absolutely. I feel like dude, it's a absolutely. world that people don't even know about. Like, just what? You don't know about it? Like, it's what? so true, dude. It's so true. I mean, I've been going to Comic Cons my whole life, dude. I love Comic Cons. Yeah. But, like whenever i started doing it with strange films and sitting on my own mm -hmm. booth like mm -hmm. you meet so many people and then you get you tap into whole new audiences of like who are actually interested in what you're doing and and you know and even on the audience side of things and i'm meeting new people mm -hmm. and, and creators and uh stuff like that too so it's it's just like a really really great experience because everyone there loves the same thing so you're like you're with Literally. your people in a, in a giant room full of and yes. it's great, dude. Everyone's having a good time. Everyone's dressing mm -hmm. up or just, you know, there's no negative energy. Like, I've never nope. had a bad experience at Comic-Con. Dude, you got to come all. with me, though, at a, at a strange films booth or something, man, and, and help. Uh, Listen, you know, we'll, I hate. We'll awesome I hate. Den posters out and stuff like that. Yeah, Let's dude. Let's do it. Let's do it. You can sign autographs was, all day. I was out oh, of town. Man. I was out of town your last one, man. I was out of yeah. town. And it hurt me. I wasn't oh, there. Man. I was like, yeah. man, I'm leaving my boy out. No, it's all good, dude. It's all good. Uh, I'll have you, or I'm, I've got um, uh, Smoky uh, Mountain Fan Fest coming up in July at the end of at the end okay. of the month uh, in Gatlinburg, and then I'm probably going to be at CreepyCon here in Knoxville. And uh, I, I need to double check the dates. I'm pretty sure it's in the end of August. Um, but I know I've got those two on the horizon. I'm going to be looking into getting some more, uh, either locally or regionally though but yeah i'll let give you a heads know. up man if you're able yeah, to come dude know. yeah come let hang out know. the booth with me and and we'll sign some posters together and stuff dude people love that lion's end poster uh let's you'd be great it, man. yeah it'd be a lot it. of fun uh sima scare says absolutely live stream take it great way to meet creative people yes exactly um yeah david brandon sima scares he hung out with me at creepy con and frank con it was awesome it was a really really good time awesome. uh so yeah man we love doing that kind of stuff all right number five Take it or leave it, voice acting. So not physical acting, but would you lend your voice and do some voice acting? Oh, yes. So we're definitely taking that. Taking that one okay. to the bank. Taking that one to the heart. Um, I've nice. done some, um, and it's a different setting because mm -hmm. usually I'm, okay, where's the camera? Where am I not supposed to be? Right, Where yeah. am I not? What steps am I taking? Uh, so that put me in a different mindset. And I love that because it was like, oh, I'm just using my voice. But mm -hmm. it's different because you have to make sure that you're given the dialogue and the texture and everything that they want from that character or voice. Mm -hmm. So that is a very uh, – it can be tricky. A lot of people think, oh, it's just you talk like you're talking right now. No, that's not per se because it depends on what all they want. Yeah, no, I can imagine it's it's a pretty <clears throat> challenging process because, like you said, you're it's not like you're working with physical actors and cameras in front of you. It's it's more of a, I got to set my mind to this particular sheet of dialogue and and the character what that's they have in mind and and project that through my voice and my own emotions and feelings voice. and stuff like that. Yeah, so uh, I've never I don't think I could do voice acting. Uh, I would try <laughs> acting on, on screen. Uh, but I always, I am always curious with uh, actors, especially like coming up actors, if they would try voice acting. Yeah. So it sounds like you would definitely do that. Uh, take it, great way to get you uh, to be more diverse as an actor. Yeah, so that's exactly. Yeah, it. For sure. I think that's, a, I think that's a definitely a good point, guys. All right, number six, take it or leave it, Godzilla. 
Big old <laughs> Godzilla monster. Listen, listen. Your question, it's like, okay, I just want to let everybody. He did not ask me these questions. None, none nope. of this was rehearsed or pre-made Never. or anything. These questions are absolutely amazing. So growing Thank up you. as a kid, I didn't watch a whole lot of movies, believe it or not. Yes, I'm an actor, but I didn't watch uh-huh. a lot of movies growing up. That was my favorite movie, Godzilla. Uh, and yes, it, it and it, nice. the clown movie and Godzilla yeah. were one of my two favorite movies growing up as a nice. kid. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No, we don't I don't ask my guests. I don't give my guests a heads up of any questions uh yeah, ahead no. of time. But yeah, and I, I like to just mix it up with everything and in and, and everything. Uh but that yeah, dude, Godzilla, dude, I'm I'm a huge Godzilla fan. You can't see it, but I've got a Godzilla poster right over there in my office here. And, that's awesome. and uh yeah, I grew up watching Godzilla's all the old, you know, all the old ones. All and, the old ones, yeah. I'm a big fan of just anytime he's popping up on screen or a new thing that you know they're using the character with. I'm I'm a huge fan. Uh, yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, dude. Did you like the new? Um, did you like the new reboots of either Godzilla or it? I guess because uh, those came out recently in the last few yeah. years. I did. I did. I enjoyed both. I know some people are like, ah, they should have left them alone. Uh, but I liked them both. Yeah. Uh, just because I just, I mean, it's what I grew up on, you know. So right. I feel yeah. like it doesn't matter what they really do. Um. I'm always gonna love it. I'm always gonna have uh, you know True. feel for it. I feel like uh, anything I'm a fanboy of, even if it's like a bad remake or something like that, I'm probably still gonna enjoy <laughs> it just because I love it so much. You know, exactly. Uh, it's one of those. It's one of those. Yeah. Simon Scare says, "Hell yeah, Godzilla!" Hell yeah. Uh, Badass poster. What's up, Alan Breswell? Did you think of the Lions Den? Michael Mathis. Thanks, Paul. He's uh, giving some shout outs in the chats there. And then, uh, all right. So let's see. We're at number what? Number seven here. Okay. Take it or leave it. Runway modeling. So I know you do photo shoots and all kinds of stuff, but would you get on the runway and do some modeling? Like I guess like the catwalk. I don't know what I don't know how you <laughs> yeah, all that stuff in front of a whole crowd hey, and all that good stuff. Hey, we're gonna take it. We're gonna take it. We're gonna take right it. I have on. not done one of those. Um, I actually got invited uh last year to a it was a tux style runway. Um okay. and I was I was once again out of town, of course. Um, mm-hmm. And I wasn't able to make it, uh, but I really hate that I missed that opportunity because it was it was a runway, and I'd love to do it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. once again, that's something different. It's diverse, um, and you know, having to learn that you know walk, and um, you know, you gotta have that confidence, you gotta have that swagger. For sure, know? for and then, sure. You know, to stop and then go back. Oh man, I. And see, I feel like me, I'm a little extra, I'm a little wild, so you know, I gotta bring my little like, twist. Oh. In <laughs> yeah. So what's your what's your uh what's your take on like modern fashion though, right? So like you know, like you know how a lot of those runway models now will just like wear something just like it looks like from a Star Trek movie or something like they just like insane get up, you know. Well, you know, what you know, would you where they're like Michael. We got you, dude. We're gonna put you on this runway, but dude, you look like you're like the Tin Man inside of a cardboard box tonight. So, <laughs> you know, like, what do you what do you think about that? Man, you hit me. You hit me with some hard hitter questions tonight, man. <laughs> oh man, and li- and and I'm like, because I've seen them, and I'm like, they really wore that. Yeah. They really made them do that. Like what? Uh just because my wild character and, and you know I'm so carefree, I could give a damn what anybody thinks about there you me. Go. Try it. I'm doing it. I'm taking it. I'm running. Oh, 10, 10 man it up. 10 man me up. <laughs> I love you, Michael, dude. You're, you're awesome. I love it. All right, dude. Yeah, sounds good to me. I, I personally am not the model type uh, on a runway, but I know I, I'll, I'm going to look out for you, dude, because I know you're going to be up there and rocking the hell out of it. All, All right. right. Uh, life <laughs> says take exposure is exposure. Yes, absolutely. True. Uh, true, true, true. August, this unusual tint in the background. What color? We this is my purple background, actually. I always uh, in the live shows, I, like I use my my purple lights. I've got all the, I've got all kinds of different lights here on my remote, but uh, I I stick with the purple oh, for nice. strange films. All right, dude. So let's get to number eight. <clears throat> take it or leave it. Backstreet Boys. Oh, we gonna take it. We gonna take it. Oh yeah, yeah. That, you, <laughs> that is ironic. Okay, this is very ironic. Because I just called, my mom called me this morning, and I was like, Mom, did you see Drake with the Backstreet Boys in Canada? And she was oh. like, oh, no. And she was like, yeah, I've seen it. 
That's awesome. She used to listen to Backstreet Boys. I was back in the car in the back seat listening to Backstreet Boys. Yeah, we're gonna take it. I take oh, it. Yeah. it cl- right classic, on, dude. Classics, man. I mean, come on. Classic. It's classic, right? Everyone yeah, grew up with like the, the boy bands, you know, the boy band era and yeah. sync and the Backstreet Boys, and you really can't hate on them for what they did and right. the made in the exactly. influence of pop culture. And they had some bangers, you know. Uh, I saw exactly. NSYNC when I was like five. They came to my my hometown, and, and I was like five years old. I didn't know what was going on, but you know, uh, <laughs> you know I feel like you would. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you would be like the heartthrob in a boy band. You know, like I feel like you'd be like everyone. All everyone would be like, oh my god! <laughs> you just you'd come out and like, you know, like I feel like you'd be like the heartthrob of the, the boy band. I feel like you'd have some. You'd have some sick dance moves too. Oh man, the dance moves. Oh, they got it. Oh yeah, don't get me started. See, listen, you know, you got me. There you oh, go. You yeah, got me now. <laughs> got to see. I got to see you rock it, dude. All yes, right, man. Sir. We're at the, the last couple questions here. So number nine, yeah. take it or leave it. Uh, stunt work. So have you done stunts, and uh, how do you feel about using your yourself as a stuntman in in films? Yeah. yeah so Jumanji was my first stunt work. So. I had six weeks. Well, it was almost it, when it boiled down to it, it was eight weeks of stunt work, and that was the craziest thing ever because I'm doing stunt work every day, day in, day out. You're telling me I just quit my nine to five to go do stunt work, uh, basically, and I'm like, what have I done? Uh, pay's amazing, everything's great, um, and it's very interesting. Uh, how much, I mean, your body twists and turns and falls and everything, how you have to critique that just for film. Um, And then to get to it, I got done, and they're like, okay, are you ready for your two, three days of of actual scene? I'm like, yeah. This is when they they didn't tell me, and I I have to get the recording, but that's where I I, I met The Rock. They were like, oh, by the way, your fight scene is with The Rock. I'm like, who's The Rock? about the rock i grew up watching on tv yeah so in the scene you'll see uh he punches me well they actually put me on suspenders and somebody's hitting a button and i'm reacting and it basically it's like a like a felt like i was on a roller coaster every time we did the scene i'm sure every time he hits i mean i'm literally getting lifted up about 20 feet in the air wow it's crazy so oh yeah we're definitely taking that Right on. Sure. But I, I bet it is like a physically demanding kind of thing where you're just kind of like, oh, man, what in my body? I don't know if I can take this after doing oh, yeah. this for so long. Yeah, it's one of those it's one of those things. You'll be sore in places you didn't even know. Like, like what? I didn't know I was. Right, sore. Yeah. You know, it's and it's one of those things like you will the first day or, or after the first day, you're like, oh, not sore. I'm good. Then two days, three days later, your absolute oh, yeah. body is hurting. For sure. For sure. Yeah. All right, dude. So number 10, the last question here we've got for you. Take it or leave it. Hockey. Yeah. Hockey is brutal. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. All right. Because, listen, they're fat. They're going fast. I mean, and it's very – I feel like it's very interesting on mm-hmm. how I focus you have to be. I mean, you're talking about a small puck. Yeah. Going every – I mean, and I grew up playing soccer and football. But I mean, just a small puck like that, uh, and I'm oh, still yeah. yet not to go. I, I'm not gone, you know, living in Nashville. I know, shame on me. I've still not been to a Predators game. I got to get to one. Um, man, I give respect to those guys. I give respect mm-hmm. because that, that that's a that's a tough sport. That's a Very tough, tough sport. I'm not really a huge sports fan, but I do appreciate and enjoy hockey you know like it's yeah. uh I, I i like watching soccer and hockey and probably basketball yeah. those are like the three sports i could like sit down and really watch and i can watch football and stuff but like i like sitting down like or go or whatever but like i i've been to a couple hockey games and i think it's like right. really fascinating like you said the energy the fun it's just fun watching it uh and they're brutal too i mean they're beating each other up and and they're like i mean and also like i'm a horrible skater regardless if it's ice skates i can't skate i can't skate in general in general hey rollerblades anything okay. so okay. we're imagining imagine like having to ice skate do all that stuff the hand eye coordination and the, and the puck and the the physical like you know like dude, like, like insane just insane yeah. that's great i have high respect that, uh, some people some people might not know but i actually can roller skate and uh rollerblade and ice skate actually i can so you can, but is that what you said? I can, I can, yeah. Nice. I don't know. 
at in, in hockey? Yeah. Got to to set you up on a like a homemade ice rink or something and test your skills. Hey, I do it. I do it. I do it. <laughs> I know you would. Vlog. <laughs> uh, right. Can we get yeah, the vlog? Yeah, exactly. Get the, get the vlog going and everything with it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Paul says, got to take hockey best close to the ice. You see the speed and execution of plays. Absolutely. It's insane how fast they go, too. I, mean, uh, I played soccer growing up, Sim Scare. And then Sweet. I can't Love it. believe you can't skate. No, I can't. I'm the guy who holds onto the rails and like tries to <laughs> scoop my way up. And then I'll, I'll let go and I'll go. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And then I'll do it. I'm doing it. All right, Michael. That was our take your leave it game. Do you have fun? Man, I love that, man. I love the surprises. I love I like that. Yeah, I like well, that. You took I think you took everything but oysters. So that's a good that's a good run there. It's a good run. Yeah, that's a good awesome, little run. Man. Yeah, I like playing that game. It gets to know our guests pretty well. Um, <clears throat> all right, dude. So we're going to get into uh, – we're actually at the, the end of our show almost, uh, but we have the one big thing I really want to talk to you about tonight and let our audience know. Uh, the Mike Mathis tour, dude. So Uh-oh. I've already put it in the uh, – I've already put it in the link uh, in the show notes, uh, or uh, you know, so people can go and click that website and check, check, your out, check you out, you know. Um, but, like, you know, like we've already talked about on the show – you know, you're everywhere, dude. You're just you're yeah. everywhere. And, and just let's talk about it, man. Like what's, how did you come up with like, all right, I'm going to brand myself or brand this journey, the Mike Mathis tour. Um, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to go to like different cities every, every week. And you're like, you're doing something at every spot too. It's not like, like you're either doing a shoot, you know, you're doing some photography, mm-hmm. you know, modeling or you're making a film or you're mm-hmm. just, Posting up in a big house or like sitting in a nice hot tub somewhere or like on a yacht, dude. Like it's insane. I'm like sitting here, I'm like (laughs) like, who is this guy? (laughs) I love you, man. I do I really do. But it's just it's so funny though. Yeah. It's so funny though. I'm like, dude, what how? So yeah, let's I'm like <laughs> this guy, oh man! So, oh, man. so yeah, tell uh, tell the audience, man. Talk about your Mac, your Mike Mathis tour. Yeah, man. So really, how I came about it, I was like, let's put a name. I mean, you know, let's add my name to the tour. You know, you hear every artist and uh, you know celebrities, and uh, you know, okay, they have their own tour, like they name it after like their album or something like that. Well, let's just name this after my life. You know, my name, this is what I do on a day-to-day, week-to-week, year-to-year, year-out. Um, and that's really how I came up with the name for Mike Mathis, or using my name because, you know, it is my life. Um, and really, it's more of a – I know some people think it's more like, oh, he's splashy, he's cocky or whatnot, but it's really of a motivation thing right. to be able to show people, hey, you can do this just as well and get out of the house, mm-hmm. get out of your city, get uncomfortable and go travel, go try new places, go try new food. That's where really the Mike Mathis tour, that's where it came from. Because I remember me being shy back in the day, what, go sit down at a restaurant by myself. Mm-hmm. I'm not ever going to do that. That's not ever going to be, I'm not going to be that guy. You look weird eating at a restaurant by yourself or trying ice cream or, you know, being on a jet ski by yourself or, uh, you know, jumping off a building by yourself or whatever it might be. Um, I was like, why? Why not? So that's right. where it really came up. Uh, so that's, you know, that's the basis and premise. And everybody's like, where did it come from? That is where it literally came from. It's just getting out of my comfort zone, really, man, and enjoying well, life. Yeah. I was about to say, live life to the fullest there. Yeah, it sounds like you do it, man. And and we talked briefly before, but, you know, like stuff like what you do with, uh, like what you did with Jumanji and and the brand stuff and like uh, some stuff like that really helps you kind of be able to finance some of that journey and stuff like that. Um, But, I mean, I guess like what are are some of your goals? I mean, you've been around the country, I'd say, pretty much everywhere. Uh, Help. Are you trying to get out? Are you trying to go overseas? Have you already been overseas yet? Or, or, or kind of where, where are you trying to do Mike, Mike, Mike Mathis tour uh, next? Yeah, next on the Mike Mathis tour is definitely uh, got that passport last year. Nice. So uh, my passport, I'm trying to make that passport my best friend, my best, my best buddy. Uh, mm-hmm. I went to Dominican Republic. 
So I, that, that's about it. I need to, I, I need uh, I need everybody that's in this comment that's in the comments right now, or watches this later on tonight, or later this week, or later this month, or in the year. Drop in the comments where I should go next for the Mike Max go. tour overseas. Give me some, give me some spots. Give me some spots. Uh, I, I like to see people's active. Uh, give me some places to go, folks. Give me some places y'all been to. Good experience, bad experience. Let me know where not to go. Uh, and you know, just give me that. Uh, give me that drive to you know. Okay, I've been here. Well, let's get up. Let's go somewhere else. That's what's up, dude. That's so cool, man. I, I, uh, I, I'm proud of you. I can't say I'm not envious of you, because, because I would love to do what you do, man. But that's so cool, man. You should go to Rome, man. You, you like, there's a you lot of countries. Rome? No, I'm saying you should go to Rome. I, Did and you? you should like. No, I haven't. Been, I've never been overseas, oh, dude. Wow. I'm, I, I need to get my passport. I, I haven't gotten it yet. Um, but um, hey, I, hold, uh, on, hold on, hold on. Right, listen, this is what I'm gonna do. A gift from me to you. I'm gonna get you your passport. I'm gonna send you the money to get your passport. Let's go. You can't do that. No, let's go. No, no, no. Let's go. Let's go. We ain't talking about. Let's go. We get you the passport. We All gotta right. get you out the country. Yeah. Well, me and you, let's take a trip together then, and I'll I'll be your camera guy. All right. I'll be I'll be your camera guy. We'll make it a whole thing, dude. Okay. We'll make it the strange uh, the strange Mike Mathis tour or something like that, let's dude. We'll it. just we'll get yeah, crazy. See, with this is what I'm talking about. This is what. I'm oh yes. man yes. yeah dude, that's that's a blast dude yeah I, i'm down man i'd love to do it with you but yeah i do it, i see nothing but uh amazing things ahead of you dude as far as traveling the world going to places you've just never even dreamed of before and just getting taking all the culture in the experience in all that stuff um and and i'm proud of you i really am i, I mean like yes. i said this since the the time or the the moment i remember seeing you on like facebook and being like hey i should reach out to that guy to now i mean dude it's just like it's it's amazing it's amazing to see that journey uh and you're just such a lovable nice human being and good guy all around dude i mean we need to hang out more i don't know why we don't right, <laughs> right COVID, man. Come COVID on, man. and COVID and me having a kid probably but yeah but you know right. what i'm saying though but honestly dude i, I really high, have high high respect for you dude really really man, do I appreciate uh, and we've got I some people who want to say hi to you as well which uh which is virgil mckee oh hey so his heart <laughs> He says, hello, Lion. I can't believe you picked your sister over me. So, uh, yeah. So, shout out, Virgil, on the Lion's Den there. He was actually – he dropped my uh, my son off uh, before um, I started the show. And I was like, maybe you should pop in on the show for just a second and, oh. and surprise, surprise Michael. I was like, man, we need to have your, like, get up, though. Like, you know, be like, hey, there's that Lion. <laughs> Something like that. But he wants to say – Mad props to you, Michael Mathis. Keep living your best life, striving to be a better human, and doing things that inspire others to do the same. Miss you, brother, and glad you're doing well with a heart and film emoji. And that's uh, that's good, man. That's really good. We're 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 happy to have you on here, man. And you, I think you, I mean, you've only, not only inspired me, but I'm pretty sure you've inspired everyone that's listening tonight as well. Um, thanks, Paul. Congrats on your teacher and beer. And paying for your passport, go to Bora Bora. All right, he says, go to Bora Bora, man. Add it to the list, okay. all right? Add all it, right, dude. So we talked about the future. Um, the last thing, uh, we're up the nitty gritty here at the end of the show. I guess I was just, I like to ask all my guests, and we've already talked a little bit about it, but like, I like to ask, um, what are some of your last words you want to say to the people? Uh, where can they find you and all that good stuff? And then what advice do you have for anybody and everyone listening, um, whether they want to be an actor, whether they want to do modeling, whether they want to travel? Like, they're, you're ask, or you're, um, perspective on life and 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 these creative things uh what kind of advice do you give to someone who might be interested in that stuff yeah definitely want to start off august thank you so much for having me everybody watching uh now currently and watches later uh thank y'all so much for tuning in and uh you know listening to this i really really can't say it enough thank you thank you thank you for everybody uh it's really the small things in life that that just flourish my heart flourish me uh so i can't thank y'all enough let's start with that uh thank you, thank you. we thank love you man we, no we thank <laughs> man. you too man we appreciate man, it nothing but love uh and i just and that's really why i do my posts that's why the mike map this tour uh that's why i love doing these podcasts because that's all i want to do man it's not about the money it's not about the fame i tell people that all the time i'm not in it for the money i'm not in for the fame i can care about like couldn't care less about any of that what I want, I want to inspire people. I want to, that, that, that's what it is. That's all it's about is inspiring people. 
get up off the couch, get out of your nine to five. If it's acting, if that's what you want to do, pursue it, do it. Be scared. You're going to be scared. There's going to be times you're, you're very scared for sure, but do it because I don't want to be, and I never want to be, and I never wanted to be that person at 70 year or 90. Well, I wish I would have tried acting. I don't, I, I, or I wish I would have, uh, you know, wish I would have went to Bora Bora, but I didn't. I don't mm-hmm. want to be uh, in that. So that's why we say, let's go. Let's go do it. Let's mm-hmm. go. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, one of my sayings, uh, but it's a, it's a motivator for me too. Every time I say it, let's go. Uh, as cliche, cliche as they say that is. Um, I mean, it's get up and do it. Do it. Don't be yeah. scared. I mean, you're going to be scared, of course, but get out that comfort zone, man. That's what I that's what I live by every day. Get out that comfort zone. Try something new. Uh and uh if you have any questions or uh concerns or hey Mike, uh, what, what should I do about this? Hey, I'm an open book. I tell everybody, ask me anything. Ask me anything. Uh, the DMs know, hey, are open. I, I, DMs are open. Hey, I've seen that you went to Texas or or uh I know you I know you went to Nashville or whatever, wherever. Uh Bora Bora or whatever. Let me know. Let me know. I'm an I'm a open book. I'm an open book, and I just want to inspire others. Uh, and uh, I can't thank y'all enough for tuning in and watching tonight. August, I can't thank you enough for the question. Everybody watching and commenting. Man, y'all got me fired up. Like, literally, I mean, my veins are popping out. I'm fired up, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm about I'm to get in man. the car right <laughs> now and drive to you, Michael. I'm fired up, too. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Come oh, dude. No, seriously, Michael. It's it. Yeah, I, I wanted to have you on for a while, and I'm glad we got to work it out and yeah. and everything. And, uh, dude, I mean, y- you know, y- y- you say some good points there, which is, <clears throat> you know, like just take – get out of your comfort zone, right? Start – you know, yeah. and, and it can be as simple as eating at a restaurant by yourself, you know? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, go uh, – you know, go do something by yourself or, or go to somewhere new, try something new, you know, stuff like that. Even cause even if you don't have like the finances to say, let's go Bora Bora or, or across yeah. the country. I mean, you can still kind of venture out of your house. You can still yeah. go down the street. You can still, mm-hmm. you know, go to that place. You've always drove by and say, Oh yeah, yeah. that place looks interesting. You know, just go in there, you know? So like yeah. stuff like that, I think you are a really, really great positive motivator to do, to be someone like a spokesperson for that kind of stuff and, and, and to live life humbly and inspire and, and enjoy life and have fun. And, yeah. and, and just, you know, I always say that, I, I mean, I told people, I guess before is like, it, it is about that first step, you know, just trying to just mm-hmm. do something that makes you happy and yeah. want, you know, that fuels you and makes you passionate about. And then, and I think, I mean, like same thing with you. It's like if strange films was ever like a huge successful entity, it, I, it really wasn't. And it was never about like trying to be famous or making a bunch of money. It's just like, dude, uh-huh. I want to like do stuff like this with people I really care about. And I want to make content right. and I want to have fun and I want to just like, do all the things I love. That's all it's all always been about, man. And I think you've got that right energy. And all I can see is like 20 years from now, you're doing a, a Mike Mathis tour, but it's like a convention every year. And you're doing like these really great inspirational speeches to everyone. You've got like a book, a best selling book, and people are just signing up to, to like come like your autograph, dude. And just like that's what I see you doing, man. Like all around the world is doing stuff like that, man. So keep it up, dude. I'm so proud of you. I really am. Man, I appreciate it, man. Hey, and I, sure. I like to tell people dreams come true. Uh you you know, if you really put the time and work into it, uh it uh, look at me. Look at me. I, I tell people all the time, I mean, who would ever thought a boy from Knoxville, Tennessee would be, you know, on the big screens, uh, you know, August. Let, let's just talk about I would have never thought in three years ago, two years ago, what Lions did. We're almost at a million views. What? Yeah, dude. I, I mean, it's insane, what? you know. Yeah, because so- Hold on. Because hold on. I got to tell the folks this. In January, I remember I went back to our messages. In January, you were like, hey, Mike. You know, I think we got like ten thousand views. I said, yeah. "No, we don't." I know. Said, I went on there. I said, "Oh, we got ten thousand views." Uh-huh. And then, um, I think Walter, Walter Martin, shout out to Walter. He messaged me. Was it two weeks, two three weeks ago? And he was like, "You know, the lines didn't sit like over five hundred thousand." I said, 
No, it's not. Me and August just talked about it in January. <laughs> it's sitting at about 10, so it's probably at about 15. He was like, no, it's at like 700,000 to be exact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? That's crazy, man. It That's was crazy. wild, dude. So just a little back it, background on all that. Like, So the Lions Den, in general, was always my highest grossing view count um, yeah. since we made it. Uh, I don't know. Well, I, I I look up like the search terms that people like look up to get to that movie, and it's always like yeah. lion movie or lion attacking people or lion horror movie or something like that. But like <laughs> Lions Den was already like always up there in like thousands of views. So uh-huh. like back like you said like in January, I uh, look it up. I'm like, dang, it's like ten thousand views. I, like that's super cool. You know my yeah. stuff like even like. My biggest film, Center City, is like at like seven thousand, and that's been out for like God, like four or five years now. And and so I'm like, that's crazy. I'm like, oh wow. And then it was like, I just saw it like skyrocket, dude. Just like like every day, it was like going up like thousands of views. And I was like, what's going on here? Well, I'm looking at the analytics because like I'm, I'm I'm like I love data, so I'm always trying to like right. look where where that traffic is coming from. Coming and from. a majority of it is coming from the country India. And it's like, shout out a lot to of, India, <laughs> dude. I know, shout out, man. Like, and that, and I got a lot of subscribers from them, and they're commenting on the video, and like, I have to translate the comments because I can't read them and stuff like that. And they're like, good job, Lion Man, and stuff like that, dude. Like, it's like, it's super crazy. Like, but like, um, wow. but a lot of the search terms are, are what I was saying, like lion movie, lion horror movie. And then what I really saw was, uh, I guess there was like this really big like foreign movie uh trailer out um so probably hitting like those indian markets and stuff like that but our film was attached to the suggested video next to it so like 80 or 90 percent of the traffic was coming directly from that trailer and it was just like it just fueled the youtube algorithm dude just like it now then it was like popping up on like like 20 other videos, like random videos, like That's some of them were state, some of them were foreign. It was crazy. So yeah, dude, we've got like almost 800,000 views. We're going to try to get to a million. We'll get to a million at some point. It slowed at down quite point. a bit, but maybe our audience can help us get to a million. Check out the Lions Den on our uh, Strange Films YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, 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 man, you're me and you, dude, we, <laughs> we, all, I mean, we all did it. But, but yeah, yeah, dude, it's, it's it. great to have you on the show and, uh, and yeah. talk about it, so. But sure. well, Michael, dude, it was a blast having you. You were so much fun, uh, lovable guy, man. And I'm so proud of you. Uh, we got the Mike Mathis tour in the link below that people can check you out. You're always on uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram and all that, so people can always follow your social media. Like he yes, said, sir. the DMs are open. If you ever just need to chat or ask questions about anything, let him know where you want him to go in the future. You know, he'll yes. he'll uh, go and take a take a selfie and maybe tag you in it or something. Uh, hey, but, yeah, maybe that's what I need to start doing. You know, when yeah. I go somewhere, tag. Hey, appreciate you giving me the suggestion. Yeah, maybe that's yeah. what I start doing. Especially that. if it's like a like a local place or something like that. Yeah, you know? it's like thanks, thanks for the recommendation. You know, like so that that'd be yeah. cool. That'd be cool. Well, Michael, excuse me. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, well, that's a wrap for our, our uh, Strange Films Live here. And uh, and yeah, we appreciate. It. We do this every Wednesday night at eight p.m. Eastern. Uh, so. Look out for our next guest coming or announcing in the next few days. And Michael, we appreciate. It. I can't wait to work with you again. Can't wait to hang out with you again, man. Maybe can't go wait, overseas man. with you. You never know. So, hey, all right, you never dude. know. That's right. That's right, <laughs> guys. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it, and we will see you next time. Okay. Uh, actually, I gotta get out of this. Uh... Ooh, there we go. <laughs>